Hey guys, it is November 4th. It's the fourth day in November, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make just a basic pickup, uh, something like a coin or whatever you want to make. Uh, we'll do a coin for this one. So we're going to right click, make an actor, and we're going to call this coin. And we'll open that up. And we're going to add a component, and we're going to add in a static mesh. Okay, we'll call it coin. And we're just going to search for cylinder. And that doesn't look very much like a coin, but we'll make it look like one. I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees. Scale with R. And just scale it in. And we'll move it back a little bit. And we'll make it uh, we'll make it gold. Okay, so we've got our mesh here. Uh, maybe let's add in a light as well. Um, point light, we'll do point light, see what that looks like. We've got a point light, we'll turn down the attenuation radius quite a bit, something like that. Eh, something like that. And we'll just use the eyedropper, turn up the value. You make it a little bit more yellow, something like that. That's pretty good. Compile. I'll make sure the point light is parented to the coin there. And with default scene root selected, we're going to add one more thing, and it's going to be a sphere collision, just like the last tutorial. And we're going to call this the trigger. Okay, and I'll just rename this uh, coin light. All right, so now if I drag this into the world, you can see, oh, well, I have to save first. It thinks I'm doing a color change operation still. Oh, save again, okay. There we go. If you ever get that uh, error for some reason after you pick a color with the light or the material, it doesn't always go away. Uh, so just save in either the blueprint or the level, whichever one it is complaining about. But as you can see here, we've got our coin and it's got a light underneath of it. And when we walk up, nothing happens. So let's add some logic to it and make some things happen here. So we'll go into the event graph for the coin and we're gonna select these nodes and we're gonna delete them. Next, we're gonna go to the trigger volume. We're gonna scroll down and we're gonna go to on component begin overlap. And this is going to be just like the other tutorials. We're gonna cast to third person character other actor is the object we want and from there we are going to do destroy actor and this is going to every time we overlap it will just destroy the coin and I'll show you what I mean so I hit play I walk up and boom, the coin, the light, everything's gone. And the reason why that happens is because we're destroying the actor. So that means everything within this actor blueprint, in this case the coin blueprint, gets destroyed when we overlap. So we're going to take this to the next level now. We're going to move this down here. And we're going to create a custom event. So to do that, just right click, hit period, and add custom event. And we're going to, uh, we're going to call this coin play sound oops capitalize that sound coin play sound okay and just to kind of demonstrate that we're not doing anything too crazy here because custom events might uh might shake up some of the newer people and that's that's all right so we're gonna go coin play sound again and what we can do is we can call this event from this event by linking it in the blueprint or in the nodes up here. So basically when you overlap as the third person character, it will tell it to run the event coin play sound. And in the event coin play sound, we have destroy actor. So this will behave the exact same way as it did before. We haven't changed anything drastically. So now since this is a coin play sound event, let's make it actually play some sound. So we are going to type in play sound at location. And what this node does is it plays a sound at a location. So let's tell it to use its own location. And to do that, we go get 
actor location. And basically what we're doing here is it's targeting itself. So when it needs a location, it will look at the location of itself. In this case, the coin blueprint being itself and use that location to play the sound. Now here is where you're going to select the sound you want to use. I'm not going to be able to use starter content for this because there was nothing that um, just doesn't loop. So uh, we're going to use some paid sounds that I bought from the marketplace. Um, I'm just going to use the collect star from the collection I'm using and we're going to hook this back up to destroy actor and what we'll do here now is when we overlap run the event coin play sound and in the event coin play sound it gets its location and it plays the sound and then it destroys the actor so let's see what that looks like that's it there we go. Let's make this a little bit more interesting for you guys. And just select all these. And as you can see, I can go around, pick all these up. Super simple, right? Now you'll notice that the coin is actually casting a shadow and we can fix that a couple ways um, but we're just going to do it through the light here and we're going to go to cast shadows and untick that, compile and now when we go back into the world it made a liar out of me. Oh no it didn't. Did it? It did. Oh you know what's happening? It's not the actual light that is casting a shadow, it's the mesh itself casting it from the world. So. Same thing, we're going to click on coin and we're going to hit cast shadow, compile, example map, and now, alright, so it didn't make a liar out of me, we're good. So what was happening there is the point light was casting a shadow as well as the mesh was casting a shadow. We don't want either of those things to happen, so we've just disabled them both in the blueprint. Alright, now let's do something else with this. Let's make it do... Okay, well first off it is kind of boring, so instead of changing the code right away, let's actually make it do something else. We're going to add a component, we're going to add in a rotating movement component. Okay, and what this is going to do is this is going to make the, oh, let me get rid of the search there. What this is going to do is this is going to make the actual coin rotate. So if I hit simulate, you can see that our coin's now moving, and that's going to look a little bit better in our level here. So if I hit play now, you can see that all of our coins are rotating just like Mario, just like Sonic, just like all those games and as we run and collect them it plays the sound. Now let's add one more layer to this. Let's add um, let's add a little counter that tells us how many time or how many coins we've picked up. So to do this um, we're gonna need a variable and we're gonna call this total coins picked up. No, we'll just call it total coins. Um, and it's not going to be a boolean. It's going to be an integer, I believe. Okay, so we have total coins. It's an integer. And now we need a function. So let's add a function and we're going to call this add coins. All right. Uh, so what we need to do in the add coins function is drag in total coins and we're also going to right click and we're going to go s whoops let's go here set total coins move this to here and we want integer we want integer plus integer so we want this connect to here. I want this to connect to here. And compile. Okay, so back into our coin blueprint, we are going to go into the event graph. And what we're going to do here is disconnect that real quick. And we're going to 
uh, call on that function we just made. So add coins. And this is the same as creating a custom event, but we've created a custom function within this character. And it will basically just call this function the same way it calls this event. So we're going to hook that up. Okay, so now that we've got this all set up, we're calling our function here. Let's hit compile. And let's go back to our map, go back to content, and in our pickup tutorial, we're going to create a new folder, which is at the top here. <laughs> and we're going to call this, um, we'll just call it HUD for now. And HUD stands for Heads Up Display, which is basically all the text and stuff like that that you see when you're playing an actual game. So within here, we're going to right click and we're going to create a new user interface and it's going to be a widget blueprint and we're just gonna call this um, we're gonna call this the player HUD just so we know that if we're playing the game this will be the heads-up display that's displayed for the character we're gonna open this up okay so we're gonna add in a box and we want a horizontal box so we'll drag it in Make it a little bigger. And we're gonna add in some text. Uh, we might need two of these. We will need two of these actually. So for the first one, uh, we're gonna call it coins. Real easy. And for this one, this is going to be uh, the number of coins. So I'll just put in some numbers, number signs. So we kind of have an idea of what's happening. And I'm going to grab both of these and go to the font and I'm going to make it 32 just so we can see it a little bit easier. Okay. And compile that real quick. So this is going to be our heads up display and it's going to show how many, uh, how many coins we picked up. But if we were to use it right now, it wouldn't do anything. So we need to add some logic. So on the number placeholder that we've made here we need to hit this little bind button we're going to create a binding okay and let's just break this up move that over okay so now on this uh we want to get our player uh character yes that's what we want and then just like in the other blueprints we're going to go cast to third person character okay and we're gonna hook this up to the object here and then it's gonna be our return node and now I need to get total coins so remember we created this variable in the um, in the player character and we are going to just click, drag, and hook that up. Okay, so once you've got all this set up, um, we need to make one more change. And we're going to do that in the game mode. So we're just going to use the example game mode here, make this real easy. And if you see this window, just click open full blueprint editor and event graph. Okay. Now from this, uh, what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to go event begin play. This is actually one of the nodes that we deleted from um, the other blueprints that we just created. So on that, we want to just type in widget. And maybe we want to, oh no, there it is. Should be right at the top, create widget. Now we need to tell it which widget to create and we want our player HUD and then we want add to view port like so and that should be it oh no that's not it oh of course my bad so I didn't hook up a return value to target there we go so now that we've got everything set up, let's hit play and let's see what happens. So you can see up in the top here, we have coins zero, coins five, 
coins 10 should be coins 15 look at that 15 coins we're rich and uh, that's really it it's pretty straightforward um, you could add in some like exploding effects or something for every time you pick up a coin but it might get a little overwhelming um, I would just leave it like that personally especially in a prototyping stage such as this and that's really it for me for uh, this one I hope you guys found it useful I'm gonna crush out this edit for you guys put it up on my Facebook and my YouTube and my LinkedIn probably again and yeah that's it for me I will see you tomorrow with another one I hope you guys found this useful and uh, peace out for new